everyone! Welcome back to my Let's Play of the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles! When we last left off, we, uh, were trying to figure out, I think, oh, the whole mess with there being a fifth person in the carriage, right? And now we were left with this question of who could it have been? And I remember ending the episode saying I was going to think about it, and then I didn't. So this is going to be on the fly like it always is. Uh, I did want to say real quick, sorry that I didn't get an episode out yesterday. Um, you know, working full time, like, really takes it out of you. Uh, and this is not my job, it's a hobby, but I still want to give it all I can. But I appreciate your guys' patience on the days when I'm exhausted. And I'm like, no one wants to listen to me try to play this game when I'm like half dead after work. Uh, so I just plan to make up for it if I have to delay a day or two. Um, but I will get out the number of episodes in a week that I want. That's, that's my deal to myself. So anyways, I just want to say, my, sorry about that. Thanks for your patience and uh, let's freaking hop back in. Uh, who could have been in the other seat, which was out of sight from the witnesses on the roof deck? The murderer? Is that what I'm gonna- do I have to, uh... Do I have to give a person, or do I have to just, like, be like... Anyone? Um... See, normally- oh, there it is, never mind. We have it, hold on. I was like, normally they give you people, but... Uh, sh it was him! Let's see. Um. What if it was him? I don't know. I don't know if I know who. Because these guys, these, they were both on the roof. He was in front. Hmm. Let's go with Inkling. I like, if I can say the murderer, that's what I want to say. I understand, my lord. The defense would like to put forward a name. Oh shit, never mind. Nope, I don't. I don't want to. I take it back. You are a fool. The response was a desperate attempt by a man who has no notion of his own limitations. A toast to hard lessons not yet learnt. Ah, let us not delay, counsel. The defense is still to name the passenger in the other seat. Smack! This could be it! This could be the chance I've been waiting for to turn this trial in my favor. On that night, on the night of the murder, the person occupying the seat in the omnibus cabin that was obscured from view was... Uh, I don't know! Um, wait, am I supposed to know this? Am I, am I crazy? Hold on. Uh, okay, let's think this through. I don't know if they just want me to mess up or if I'm actually supposed to know this. So, um, I don't think it's Magnus. Could it be the victim? Because Magnus was asleep, right? So there's a chance that it wasn't actually the victim they saw, but Mason, like, sitting there asleep, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's either of these two. Let's just try it, right? Ooh, that's definitely wrong. Yes, concealed in the blinds of the cabinet at night was none other than this unexpected passenger. Yeah, that's not right. Whatever so-called logic you use to arrive at that conclusion, it matters not. Because your answer has made one thing abundantly clear. You're a dumb bitch. The real blind spot is inside your head. It would appear to be unusually large. Ugh. You could have just said that's not right. So I want you go. Uh, Mr. Naruhodo? Our task here is to defend Mr. McGilded. And we are working on the assumption that he is innocent of this crime. Um, yes, of course. Why? That must mean, then, that there was someone else inside the omnibus with Mr. McGilded, the true culprit. That's right. Uh, exactly what I've been... Oh! Of course! So the two people sitting inside the cabin that the witnesses saw through the skylight that night, they were the victim and the real culprit. Yeah, no dipwad! That's what I'm trying to get at! It does seem... as though we've all been making a false assumption. 
The witnesses weren't looking at Mr. McGilded at all. Meaning, he has to have been sitting somewhere else. Oh! What is that delay, Council? Okay, I was just thinking that, potentially. So, McGilded was on the other side. So the person they saw this whole time wasn't him at all. It was the murderer was sitting next to the guy. Okay, that was going to be my second guess if they didn't tell me I was completely wrong. Take that! And the music stopped. We're good. Bam! Passenger in the enclosed cabin that the witnesses on the roof deck failed to see has to have been Mr. Magnus McGilded. Right, because they saw the hands were covered in blood. Turns out it wasn't his hands because he was asleep on the other side. Okay. Mick. Mr. McGilded? What are you talking about, Council? That's the name of the defendant. Really? I didn't even know. Now I'm kidding. Objection. Yeah, okay. Whoa! If I desecrate this chamber by smashing my hollow chalice, do forgive the discourtesy. Bro, you already did it. What are you saying if? Lord Van Zeeks! People talk of those tiny island nations in the Far East as having a learning and culture of their own. But I see they use the terms ill-advisedly. What are you trying to say? Let me explain in terms that even a student of an artless backwater such as yourself might understand. Whoa! When the bloody scene unfolded, the victim and his assailant were sitting side by side. Multiple witnesses have attested to the fact. It's the very premise on which this case is built. Objection. Yeah, I know. But that premise may be wrong. What? If the victim really was sitting beside Mr. McGilded, it creates an inconsistency that can't be reconciled in any way. What inconsistency, counsel? The defendant's gloves, my lord. Gasp! Both witnesses made the same testimony. They claimed that there was blood on both hands of the person sitting next to the victim. Objection! Really? Yet we know their truth to be otherwise. Only one glove bears the gory remains. Objection! I'm just gonna yell at each other now. The point is, even in the face of this irrefutable evidence, both witnesses have maintained their stance. Either they're stubborn or something's wrong. <laughs> Yes, their testimony remains unchained. Changed. Sorry. <clears throat> exactly. They both adamantly swear that they clearly remember seeing blood on both hands of the assailant. In short, their memory of events is correct, and their testimony reveals the truth. It was somebody else sitting beside the victim that night, a third party we have yet to identify. And the victim's blood was on that passenger's hands, both of them. Objection! Then who is this third party? I don't know! <laughs> Obviously, the true culprit. Uh, extraordinary! Ex extraordinary! <laughs> extraordinary! Order! 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 What exactly are you postulating? Objection! Oh, my throat. <laughs> The defense's postulation is just that, nothing more than conjecture. The witnesses have clearly stated that they saw the accused. Objection. Did they, though? But when elaborating on his testimony, Mr. Fairplay said the two of them were wearing hats and I couldn't exactly make out their faces. Hmm. Yes. The tops of their heads were obscured by the roof. I could see the rest of them, though. Yes, that's right. Both gents were most certainly hatted. Hatters do tend to notice such things, sir. And what particular styles of hat did the two gentlemen spot? Sport? Huh, Mr. First? <laughs> I'm afraid I don't remember. And you call yourself a hatter? The mad hatter. The style of hat makes no difference. There was no third passenger in that cabin. How can you be sure? Because if there had been, the accused Mr. McGilded would undoubtedly have offered to dispo depose the fact. That's true. Unless, that is, you are proposing an even more preposterous explanation. 
that the accused failed even to notice the presence of their true culprit in the very cabin in which he traveled. Ha! Ah. Uh. I mean, people on trial have missed bigger things. He's right. If there was another person traveling in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus, it's inconceivable that Mr. McGilded would have been unaware of it. Unless they were in the little compartment under his seat. Because he was asleep, so I mean, I guess they would have to move him to get under the seat, though? I don't know how that works, but... Order! There is clearly a simple solution to this problem. Bring the accused, Mr. McGilded, to the stand. Well, uh, what say you, counsel? The prosecution objects, my lord. On what grounds? As a suspect, he will have already made a full statement to the police. But, but what if there's some reason why he's unable to speak freely? Magnus McGilded is no uneducated ruffian. If it indeed turns out the man has been withholding information, you can be sure it will have been a most deliberate act. Huh. Counsel for the defense, what is your opinion? My lord, should we ask Mr. McGilded to testify or not? Oh god. Wait, why would he want to hide it though? Is he... If he... Hmm. Huh. Huh. Unless he's covering for someone that he knows and or cares about. And that could be why he didn't ask for a lawyer, but then he wouldn't have asked us to do it. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't think he would have seeked help at that moment in time. He probably would have been like, nah, man, I'm good. You know what I mean? Unless he's being blackmailed? Hmm. Well, uh, you know, truth is truth. We should get the truth. All the truth. So, demand it. Yes, we need to hear what he has to say in order to find out the truth. Yeah, Ryunosuke! <laughs> Why are you raising your hand? The defense would like to call Mr. McGilded to the stand. Huh. In that case, I would like to hear the opinion of the jury. Oh, I don't trust them. Oh, yes, um, I need a little time to consider this. If you ask me, I think we should hear what Mr. McGilded has to say. Get the man out here, I say! It would be utterly illogical not to hear his testimony. When something needs doing, get it done. That's how I run things at the guild. Hearing what the patron of my favorite little park has to say, oh yes, that would be lovely. Yes, the jury says the man must be heard. Alright. Cool beans. Very well, the court will hear the defendant's testimony. Bailiff, show the defendant to the stand at once. Oh, I left my water on the shelf. I'm going to grab it. If you hear rustling, it's just me. Ah, dot, 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 dot. Oh, can I press the button with one hand? Oh, there we go. Where is my water? Oh, there it is. Now, maybe what actually happened that night will finally become clear. Oh my god, I hit the floor really hard. Let me take a sip of water. The judge's voice hurts my throat. I really should change it. But, ah, uh, you know, whatever. Santa Claus is Santa Claus. <clears throat> Let proceedings be resumed. Mr. McGilded, have you been listening to the discourse of the day? I almost said discord. Oh god, what voice did I give him? To be sure I have, my lord. I think it was that. There are now two matters in which the court desires to hear from you. The first... So whether or not there was a third party with you in the omnibus cabin, as proposed by the defense. The second, is that if such a person was indeed present, why did you conceal that fact from the police? Begad, no! Tis not my nature to hide anything at all! Just answer the questions, please. The truth of the matter is, I've been desperate about this all along. And do I tell you all or keep me mouth shut? Tell us what, Mr. McGilded? Bro, you're gonna die if you don't tell us the truth. What? Ha ha. The fine fellow representing me is absolutely right. In the carriage on the night with myself and the other man, uh, there was another passenger. It's true? Holy shiz. I and was me who helped the little urchin get away after it all happened. You... 
What? Wait, is he saying it was a child? Oh, he's mad. No, make this me guilty. That convenient excuse can save you now. I'm truly sorry, so I am Lord Van Zeeks. I'm sure you'll be wanting to know why I said nothing when I was taken by the police. Am I Southern now? Use. I do be having a very good reason, I assure you. Which was? Well, the little child was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and not in any way involved, you see. What? If the police had known the wee one was there, nah, they'd have assumed she'd done it. They'd have hauled her into this here courtroom just like myself. I was only trying to spare that. Young hearts and young minds are easily damaged, my lord. Huh. <laughs> and who is this young child of whom you speak? Hell if I know, man. That I don't know. You don't know? I, well, uh, the weak thing just happened to be in the carriage that night. I never saw her before or since. Objection! We have absolutely no reason to believe this man. The prosecution calls for their witnesses' statements to be disregarded by their court. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the urchin isn't here in this courtroom as we speak, listening to the proceedings. What? Ah, smoke! Ah, fire! There's a fire! Look, someone's trying to get away! Ha! After them, it's no use! Oh, I can't see anything through all the smoke! What is going on? Be careful, Mr. Naruhodo! Cover your face! Bailiff, don't let the accused escape! Secure the omnibus! I hereby call an emergency recess! Bailiff, ensure the defendant is in custody and clear the courtroom! Yo, what? An escape? We were hurriedly removed from the smoke-filled courtroom by the bailiff. Amid scenes of chaos as people stumbled over one another in their desperation to flee the chamber. We had no idea what was happening. All we knew was that, for the time being at least, the trial was suspended. Oh, to be continued. Continued. Okay. Did he give someone a sign? He like looked over and all of a sudden he can escape, maybe? I feel like that was a signal. Huh. Maybe he didn't say anything so that they would bring him back later and it like bought him time so the other person could prepare to help him escape. I speculate too much, I'm sorry. <laughs> 18th of February, 15, 20, 15, 1252 PM, the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. What on earth just happened in there? Mr. Naruhodo, I've managed to find out what happened. Ms. Suzato! I was told I was an advanced form of smoke grenade, a type of exploding device that releases smoke. A smoke grenade? It, it sounds like the sort of thing ninjas use. They're just making sure everything is safe now. I think the trial will start again before long. But who would have done something like that? The police managed to catch someone who was trying to flee the courtroom, apparently. Flee the courtroom? Why? Well, it's a young girl of around 15, I hear. A young girl? Then, could it be? The other passenger that Mr. McGold- yeah, Mr. McGilda was just talking about. My thoughts exactly. So he wasn't lying. Oh, what's become of Mr. McGilda, actually? There are so many things I need to ask him about. He's not here. I think he was summoned to the prosecutor's antechamber to answer questions. Along with the young girl. Who is she, I wonder? And what was she even doing here at the trial? She was taking a huge risk, and for what possible benefit to herself? There's another matter that's troubling me. What's that? The 20 pence. Huh? Oh, uh... Math? I don't know. According to the coachman, Mr. Beppo... He took four passengers that night at a fare of five pence each. That comes to a total of twenty pence exactly. But now it seems there were in fact five passengers. 
Which means the figures don't seem to add up again. Uh, she's right. That is strange. Bula and counsel for the defense kindly proceeded to the courtroom. The trial will recommence, 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 <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> oh, thank you, officer. We'll go in straight away. Well, whoever she is, I imagine this young girl will be asked to take the stand and testify now. I really can't imagine what she's going to say, but it could alter the whole direction of the trial. We'll know soon enough, Miss Suzato. Yes. Let's go. I know there's a girl who's like on the cover of the game. She seems like she might make smoke bombs. So this could be where we're introduced to her. I don't know. Uh, 18th of February, 1 p.m. The Old Bailey Courtroom. Same old... Pl oh. Nope, that's not the girl on the cover of the game. I don't think so. There's the young girl next to Mr. McGilded. Look. She must have been the one who caused the disturbance before. Well, uh, after that rather eventful recess, the court will now resume the trial of Magnus, Mr. Magnus McGilded. Now then, Lord Van Deeks. My lord. I believe you have established the cause of the smoke which veiled proceedings earlier. It seems to have been an advanced form of smoke grenade of the sort typically employed by the army. Good gracious! The army! What in the devil's name? It was an elaborate attempt by a young girl to collect or escape from the public gallery, but she was caught. And now occupies the stand. Huh. Your name, girl? <coughs> Are you responsible for the smoke grenade which induced such pandemonium here in my courtroom? Ignore him. Just... What is the meaning of the deplorable behavior? Damn. Ahem, if I may, my lord. Yes, Mr. McGilded? I think perhaps I ought to explain here. Why is it that this wee lass was here in the first place, and why she tried to bolt like that? It is all tied up with the events of that night, so it is. Uh, <laughs> he looks unsure all the time. Very well, Mr. McGilded. Give your testimony. You will explain to the court exactly how this young woman is involved in the case. Just what did happen that night? It's not like a defense lawyer needs that information or anything. I wonder if she stabbed him. Uh, the young girl. On the night in question, I took the back seat in the omnibus and promptly nodded off. Then, big a loud thud and a wee scream woke me up with a fast start. Ah, uh, there was a fella collapse on the floor at me feet, so I sat him up on the seat across from me. Then I turned to find out where that scream had come from, and bless my soul, what did I find? There was a child in there, all curled up in a ball, hiding a wee self away. Uh, okay. I remained somewhat baffled, I confess, but from what I gather, on the night in question... This young girl was indeed riding in the omnibus, is that correct? Tis exactly as the defense counsel said. This last was the fifth passenger, my lord. Huh. Wait, so she screamed? I thought the other guy screamed. Uh... Wouldn't they have, like, reported multiple screams being heard then, you know? Very well. The defense may now cross-examine the witnesses. <laughs> I can't read. Are you ready, counsel? Sure. Yes, my lord. Ganbate! Or rather, no. I have no idea where to start. I love when he does that face. Man, Zeke's is just judging me from the sidelines. Alright, cross-examination, broski. Let's go. On the night in question, I took the back seat in the omnibus and promptly nodded off. And when you first got onto the omnibus, were there any other passengers already on board? There were not. The cabin was empty and there was no one on the roof deck either. Either? Jeez. You were the first passenger, as it were. I see. Aye, and that's why I took the back side as I did. Tis the most comfortable, so it is. Could you explain exactly what you mean by the back seat? By all means. Tis how you already described it earlier. 
I'm talking about the seat opposite the one in which the poor gentleman who was stabbed was sitting. Like I said, tis the most comfortable and where I feel most at ease. And of course, I enjoy gazing through the skylight from time to time as well. You gonna add anything, Ranzik? So you're just gonna ponder. Begora, uh, Begora, Begora, I don't know what that is. Loud thud and a wee scream woke me up at the very start, okay? Hold it! A loud thud, you say? And a scream? Aye, that's right. How can I explain it? Uh, it was like the sound of someone falling to the ground. That sort of noise. So you think it was the sound of Mr. Mason falling to the floor, having been stabbed? Well, now, you'll remember I was asleep at the time, so I wouldn't like to say. And when the sound woke me and I opened my eyes, uh, there wasn't a soul to be seen in the carriage but the fellow on the floor. Huh. You didn't see anyone. But at the same moment, you did hear a scream? Ah, from the seats above you on the roof deck, I presume? Not above me, no, my lord. Twas from inside the cabin. Uh, but I wasn't altogether thinking about the scream. No, I was too stunned by the desperate sight before me eyes. Okay. Fella collapsed on the floor, so he sat him up. Hold it! Was he bleeding out of his abdomen? You, you sat him up? The victim, you mean? That I did. On the seat across from me, as I said. I could plainly see the poor devil was already gone. And you wouldn't leave a dead man just lying on the floor now, would you? I mean, tis common courtesy, so it is. I find that a little hard to believe. Hurrah! Lord Van Zeeks! Now why would that be? You wait to find a man lying dead at your feet in a carriage, and the normal person would hail the cabin. Any upstanding member of London society, that is. Well now, as you know, I'm in something of a special line of business. The business of lending money at exorbitant rates of interest? Unfortunately, my lord, not everyone is thankful for the help I offer them, and some would even see me dead. So I do try, wherever at all possible, to avoid getting myself in a tangle with trouble. Are, are you suggesting you were just gonna leave the man there? Heavens alive, no! I was always intended to report it, so I was. Only, uh, I had a mind to find out the whys and wherefores first. The whys and wherefores? Right you are. There were some details I wanted to understand before anyone else got to meddling. That we scream I heard, for example. Wouldn't your good self do just the same? Huh. Yes, the scream he says he heard at the same time as the thud of the victim collapsing. Oh, <laughs> I thought he was saying, yeah, the scream I would go to that verse. No, he's saying, ha, huh, yes, the scream, uh, yeah, okay. Sometimes you don't know how to read these things until you see the whole sentence, you know what I mean? Uh, then I turned to find out where that scream had come from and bless my soul, what did I find? Hold it! A child. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm sure you told the court that there is no one else in the carriage except yourself and the victim. Yeah, that's why I was confused. Did he find her in the seat? He found her in the seat. So I did, says so I did. As far as I could see, that is. What do you mean by that? Well, now, uh, it is a queer thing. Uh, the wee screamed my head as I woke up. It came from, if you'll excuse the vulgar expression, under me backside. Good gracious! Under your backside? And when I lifted the seat on which I've been sitting, I found there was a weak cubby hole there for storage. Mr. Narahodo, we can examine the omnibus ourselves, remember? Yes, of course. The whole bus was submitted as evidence. This would be a very good time to have a thorough look around inside. And that's what I found. Uh, a child in there all curled up in a ball. Didn't I already look at it? Maybe it didn't let me see. Let's let's do it again, just in case. Uh, let's open the door and go inside. Scene of a murder, blah, blah, blah. We've done it before. Same old biz niche. That explains why there's blood on the floor. He died on the floor. Uh, reasonably soft, it's actually rather hard. 
Uh, oh. Wait, what are they just talking about impractical clothes? Has a handle. Here we go. Uh, this is a storage compartment, but there's nothing in here. It's totally empty. Something doesn't seem right here, but I can't put my finger on what it is. Wait. Wait, wasn't there stuff in there earlier? Wait, am I crazy? Was there blood on the floor earlier? Wait, am I losing my mind? That's blood, isn't it? Is something wrong? Oh, it's just... Well, this blood scent is so obvious, that's all. And yet, Van Zeeks has made no mention of it. I suppose that does seem a little strange. Yo, why do I have such a bad feeling about this? Hold on. I was sitting here and I was like, I don't think I even mentioned that before. I think someone added this in the confusion. They... I thought that was closed for a second. They stole this stuff out of here and they added this stain on the floor. It's like they want the crime scene to be different. That's so weird. Is there even a lock on this handle? Have you seen enough? Sure. Wait, can you even lock that door? It doesn't look like there's a lock on the handle. Let's not question it. Anything else missing? I mean, it has the same name. Is the number the same? I think they just messed with the crime scene. Damn. Okay. I don't see anything else new. So, so I'm pretty sure someone added those and took stuff away. Hold it! You say she was hiding herself. Who the hell is tampering with the crime scene? I. that's right. Uh, it was hard to see in the dim lamplight, but she was all curled up in a wee ball. When her eyes met, well, uh, me heart nearly stopped beating in me chest. Ah, uh, you're really overreacting, or er, overacting this. Still and all, uh, I pulled her out from under there. And sat her on the seat opposite so I could have a wee chin wag with her. The seat opposite? Next to the dead body? Ah, <laughs> that's right, just next to the dead gentleman there. You sat this young girl next to a corpse, sir? Well, uh, as I'm sure I mentioned, a gentleman in my position can all too often find himself in mortal danger. So? I needed to find out just who the surgeon was, you see. Huh. And while I was in the middle of talking with her, I heard another scream, a fella's voice this time. Okay, so what happened was, he sat her next to the guy. She has blood all over her hands. The guy up there looks down, sees it, screams, and then shit hits the fan, right? Presumably, that scream was Mr. First, who was sitting on the roof deck seats. Right you are again, I would say, sir. Uh, looking down through the skylight, I uh, must have seen this young girl and the gentleman with the knife in his belly. In other words, the previous witnesses did not, in fact, see you at all, Mr. McGilded. What they believed to be yourself and the victim was, in fact, this girl and the late Mr. Mason? Aye, my lord. I was, as I think everyone understands now, sat at the back of the carriage out of sight. Why would she kill that guy, though? It is certainly plausible. The defendant is somewhat diminutive in stature. And readily confused, perhaps, with this young girl. Readily? I don't know about that. After that, of course... Ah, uh, with the scream from the gentleman over us, the driver realized something was wrong and pulled up the horses. D did they not see, like, his suit? Like, it's a very distinct suit. It's either bright purple or she's wearing, like, normal clothes. Like, I understand where the confusion lies in that part of it. <laughs> Like, ah, I can't confirm it was him because he was wearing a hat. Well, I mean, I think you could see, like, his legs. His bright purple legs. Uh, thank you, I've heard enough. The events as explained are clear in my mind. However, at least one conundrum remains. 
Who is the girl? Yo, I don't know, but that is something we'll find out next time. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're still enjoying the series. As always, feel free to leave a like, comment, favorite, or subscribe, whatever you guys are feeling. And until the next time, lights off, dark out.